Hey, what's up, everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another audio programming for beginners tutorial. And today what we're going to talk about is how to build a basic filter. OK, so filtering and how to and, and filter design is a really large and really complex subject that uh, we can we could talk for hours about. And, um, you know, it's something that I'm still studying on deeply. And, um, you know, it's 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 a very, you know, it takes a little bit of time to get around. But what we're going to talk about today, since this is a tutorial for beginners, is just basically what a filter is uh, as some very basic filter types. So we aren't going to get into any filter design or anything like that. Sometime down the line, I would like to do maybe uh, custom filter design in Python. Uh, and, uh, you know, we can we can talk about difference between finite impulse response filters, infinite impulse response filters, and so on. But for now, we're just going to do very basic types, low pass, high pass, band pass, you know, the differences between each of those. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to give myself a little bit of room here. Move this down. So just going to give you uh, an overview, uh, a recap of what we've gone through already. So we have a, a very basic synthesizer as one oscillator, which means that we just have kind of one, one, uh, one wave, um, one wave oscillator, which is a sine wave. Okay, and that's where we have this cycle object here. Uh, we've added some basic functionality where we've added some FM, AM, and RM synthesis capabilities. We've also added an amplitude envelope as well as MIDI in capabilities so we can play uh, we can play notes with a MIDI keyboard now. Okay. Um, and now we're going to do filter. We're going to do a basic filter. So I just want to show you where in the process this would go. Now, you know, synthesizers have all different types of, um, you know, configurations and capabilities. And you can take, um, you know, envelopes and you can drag them to wherever you, you know, wherever you'd like. But we're just going to do a very basic design uh, today. And we're going to use what's called the biquad object today to design our filter. So we aren't actually really doing kind of filter design per se. This is just going to be kind of your bog standard filter. Uh, Biquad is just a bi is a type of infinite impulse response filter. Okay, uh, I'm not going to get into the specifics of what it is, why it's called Biquad. For now, we can we can do that down uh, at, at a later point in another uh, more advanced tutorial. But what we can do is we can just talk about how this is going to be routed. Uh, in, in our design. So at the moment we have we have our notes coming in here into our into our amplitude envelope. It's getting multiplied by our actual signal. And now what we could do is we could just take this we could just take our, our filter and we can actually just put it in in here where it's gonna where it's gonna go right here. Okay? So the sound's coming in, it's going to go into the filter, and then it's going to come back out and go out of the output. Okay? We also have a, um, a visual representation that's available in, uh, in Max. It's called Filter Graph. Okay? And what this allows us to do is this actually allows us to control the settings of the biquad so we can see it visually, which gives us a nice um, a nice indication of what is actually going on with the filter. And what we could do is just take the output of that filter graph and put it to the input of the biquad, and then we can control the settings using using this filter graph. So now, as as always, uh, you know, if we don't, if we're not familiar, or if we've forgotten how to um, configure our how to configure a max object, we can just alt click. And then it just brings up a help file like so. Okay, and we can see that you know we have a configuration that's very similar to to what we've done um, in our own synthesizer here. You can see that we have a we have a menu here where we can select different filter types. We have a filter cutoff frequency, which which I will discuss in just a moment. Um, also a gain and a what's called a Q. Okay, which which is uh, referring to resonance. Okay, so we're just going to make a, uh, just create a similar kind of setup here. Okay, so if I just go, I create a new object, 
we're going to create an object that's called uh, a truey a, a, a attribute. This is kind of like short for attributes, I guess. It's called a truey. And what you can do with certain objects is you can actually plug it in to some objects. And then what happens is if I lock my patch now, and then if I just click on this object, then it gives me a whole bunch of different things that I have options to control. Okay, uh, in this in in this particular circumstance, we're just going to do active filters. Okay, or not active filters. Let's see. Uh, let's find filter type is what we're looking for. Okay, and you see that when I do when I change it to filter type, then we have a couple different. Then it automatically populates this uh, this list, and then I can choose from a couple different filter types here which I will which I will go through very shortly okay so now if I unlock the patch again okay we can uh, if we look here we got we have filter coefficients which we're not going to discuss today okay um, but then we have this uh, we have this input here which is called filter cutoff or sec or, or center frequency okay so we have we have a situation that um, we can put a dial here, so live dial, and now I can just plug it in here. Okay, now we just got to go and we can go into the inspector by com by pressing Command I, and we can change the range of this filter. Now. Um, <sighs> This is kind of a little bit more advanced than I'd like to get at this point, but basically we hear, we tend to hear sound logarithmically as humans, which means that we hear, uh, we perceive more uh, differences greater in the lower frequencies um, than we do in the higher frequencies. So, you know, we would be able to tell a big difference between 100 and 200 hertz as opposed to 1,100 hertz and 1,200 hertz. Okay, we, we probably wouldn't even perceive a difference, you know, between 1,100 hertz and 1,200 hertz, whereas we would perceive a big difference between 100 hertz and 200 hertz. Okay, uh, the reason I bring this up is because, you know, in our, in our design for the filter cutoff, normally I would go in here and I would do a uh, equation to... Uh, make this make this filter cut off more logarithmic, but I uh, but I think but I think in this circumstance I'm just going to do the filter cut off up to uh, from 20. Um, now do it a little bit. Let's see. I'll do it from 20 hertz up to maybe uh, 2,000 hertz. Okay, and I'm not going to worry about. Um, I'm not going to worry about making this logarithmic for now. That's something we could do down the line when we kind of tweak this up a little bit. I'm going to change the unit style to float as well. Oh, actually, it's got a hertz one here, which is cool. Uh, so that makes it kind of a float. Okay, um, that that'll make our filter our filter smoother. Okay, so that's great. And we can actually even we can actually even label this um, if it will let me. I've got to unlock the patch. Okay, it's always good to label stuff. So I'm just going to put this as cutoff. Not cut off, cut off. Okay, so um, next we have a filter gain. Um, I'm just going to leave that. I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, I'm going to go over here to uh, this, this Q, which is resonance. And I will explain this in a moment, but we're just going to make this another uh, live.dial. I'm not sure which range I need to make this for now, but I think I'll just make it maybe zero to two. And um, I will make this a float. Okay. Also what I'm gonna do, can I, can I set a max and a min in here somewhere? Sometimes with these, sometimes with some of these settings, especially when we're dealing with like the gain, um, it's good to set a maximum and minimum, or else you can go, you, you can get yourself into a, a, a situation where um, 
you end up blowing up your filter or, you know, blowing your eardrums out. So um, I'm just going to call this resonance. Doesn't look like there's a place that I can. Oh, this is a live dial. So this is automatically going to go from between zero and two. Oh, come on, man. You should know that. <laughs> so um, great. OK, so we have that now. OK, so so now I think our filter is pretty much set up. OK, so let me, let's just have a little test. I'm going to change my MIDI port to my keyboard here. Let's see if it appears that I got sound coming out. I'm going to raise the sound level just a little bit so you can hear a little bit better. OK. Great. So first one that we'll talk about is a low pass filter. OK, these are quite, you know, descriptive of what we um, uh, doesn't look like doesn't look like it's doing what I need it to do. Maybe it's because I don't have the gain set properly. Um, so let me just do this. I'm going to do a live dot dial. I'm going to set this between zero and one. See if that might fix our problem here. Okay. Then let's see here. Okay, still not doing it. Let me just try a different. Is it because my resonance? Ah, it's because my resonance. Okay, I have a resonance of zero. Um, so okay, so let's just set let's just reset this resonance here so so that we have a more effective resonance. So let's set let's do a default setting of 0 0.6 as our minimum and then let's do like three as our maximum. Okay, so just a little bit of live debugging here. So unlock the patch. So we'll just set it 0 0.6 as the min and then the max as three. Okay, so now we have a filter that's going like so, and I'm gonna explain all this to you, of course. Okay, maximum is one. I'm just gonna change, I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to change the name of this just so we can keep the name straight. I'm just going to change the name to gain. Great. Okay, just so we can kind of keep organized. And I find I'm a lot more motivated when I see that things are organized and, you know, in control. So there we go. And I'm going to, going to wrap my wires here. Okay, here we go. Okay, great. So first thing that we'll talk about, first, first filter that we'll talk about, these are just basic filter types, something that, you know, filter types that you would see on most synthesizers um, that, and um, they're pretty self-explanatory, uh, but I'll go through them anyway. So we have what's called a low pass filter. Okay. Um, if you ever get confused about what a low pass filter is, just means low, you're passing the lows, you're passing the low frequencies. OK, and that just means that we're cutting off the high frequencies. So if I just go down here to a frequency of 88 uh, of 82 hertz. OK, as opposed to let me just open the filter all the way. OK, I'm just going to turn my volume down here so I don't clip. OK. Um, but you could hear that there were more high frequencies in the second note that I was playing than in the first note. Okay, so that's so that's low pass. Just means that we're passing the low frequencies. Okay, we also have this setting here that's called resonance. Okay, and as you can see, as I turn that up or turn it down, okay, it's just putting a little peak around those around this 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 frequency range here. Okay. And let's see how that affects the sound. So I'm just going to leave it like this. I'll pull this down just a little bit, just so we can get, express that difference a little bit better. Okay, so no resonance. Okay, let's put the resonance up, see if that changes the sound. Let me, let me just exaggerate it a little bit, just so I can give you guys a better uh, indication. Let's set it to maybe, I don't know, 
eight might be dangerous here. Okay. Um, all right, now I'm gonna do it again. Okay, I'm gonna add some, I'm gonna add some uh, harmonics here. It might be because there are no harmonics. Um, yeah, so you can so you can hear with that with that example there that you know the frequencies are getting are, are getting low past there. But if I put this resonance up, you get kind of more of like a kind of um, you get more frequencies that are kind of bunched up around that around that um, around this range here. And you'll probably hear more more of a uh, more of a difference when we get to um, the band pass filters. Okay, so that's low pass. Then we got high pass. Okay, just the opposite. We're letting the highs pass. Okay, so I do this, and then I move the filter up. You can slowly hear the lows, um, the lows getting cut off as I move that filter up. Okay, so that's high pass, letting the highs pass. Then we got what's called band pass. Okay, which is where we're just we're just letting a frequency pass in in the middle, and then we're cutting off or we're attenuating the frequencies around it. And as I turn as I turn the resonance up, now we should be able to hear more of a more of a difference in this one. So we got this, and then let me just turn up the resonance. So you can hear that more frequencies are getting bunched around that middle that middle band. Okay, then we got band stop. Okay, which means that we're just cutting out. A, uh, a frequency in the middle. Okay, let me see if I can. Or... With this particular sound, you can't hear very much of a difference. Got peak notch. Um, can't remember what peak notch is. So that's just. Looks like a just just kind of an all pass but with a peak notch I'm not going to go over that got low shelf which is kind of um, where instead of shelving the instead of um, ah here we go let me go back to peak notch that's what we need um, so yeah so peak notch just looks like kind of a band stop that has an adjustable that uh, that's a little bit more adjustable on the y-axis there okay then we have low shelf which is kind of like a uh, a high pass filter except we're not completely cutting off the frequencies these are a little bit less uh, a little bit less seen in my experience got high shelf which is the same thing you know kind of a um, a low pass filter but instead of completely cutting off the high pass uh, uh, instead of completely cutting off those high frequencies we're just um, we're just attenuating them and then we have resonant filter you know which is like a band pass filter and then all pass I've never really quite understood but it's just letting all the frequencies pass um, never quite understood the use of that uh, so if anybody knows or understands why I would you know a situation where I would use an all pass filter uh, other than if I just wanted the, the filter to go through kind of the, the, the signal to go through kind of unaffected um, drop me a comment below because I'm really curious so those are our basic filter types I hope that uh, I hope that was helpful for you and just to remind you you know just kind of in a typical in a typical synthesizer design you know you would just have this this filter coming in after the um, after the amplitude envelope you know we could also take you know while we're on the subject of envelopes envelopes don't don't only need to control amplitude we could use those to control the behavior of this filter so if I wanted to create another another envelope that controlled 
the be, the way that this filter behaved, I could do that in a similar way to the way that I've done with this amplitude envelope. But I'm not going to do it because I'm scared of screwing it up right now. And I don't want to screw it up this late in the video, but maybe I'll do it next time or something. Um, so, so that's where I'm going to stop things for now. And, um, and if you have any questions or, um, or anything, just drop me a comment below. And uh, that's it for this one. And I'll see you next time.